You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by Aaron Walker and Heather Dyer. Tune in weekly to get inspired and make good food. Recording in progress. I had one of those moments when I logged into Zoom where I did not know the code. Right. No, I went. I had to sit here and like my computer took a while to even remember how to open zoom i could tell it was like <laughs> uh what <laughs> it's been a little while <laughs> oh, all right welcome welcome everybody to three kitchens podcast i'm heather hi heather i'm aaron <laughs> hi aaron <laughs> nice to meet you <laughs> nice to meet you well it's been a little while since we recorded so it might feel yeah new. Yeah, we did all those like pre-recordings for summer. Yeah. And so we have had a little break, which is really nice. Yeah. And we've been taking some time off and going places and doing things. It's yeah. been really nice. Summer is a mm -hmm. good time. It is. And it's so short here that we really try to pack it all in, yeah. which can be exhausting too. Mm. We pretty much hit September burnt. Burnt right out. And then we have to like put the kids into school and get their gears going. And then we take that month to recover. Although I had my <laughs> children in September, which was terribly planned on the retrospect, but September is like too many things happening. You're acting as though you can plan when you have children. I know you don't get to plan that these things. That doesn't happen. <laughs> nope. Well, speaking of summer vacation, I just got back from one. We were just talking about it. I went to the Okanagan, which for our listeners in other places is the interior of British Columbia, which is the westernmost province of Canada. And once you get past the Rockies heading west, it's this beautiful valley of lakes and vineyards and orchards. And the summer is just all about fruit and swimming mm. and hanging out in the sun. And it was really beautiful. And of course, I had to pick up some fruit. I didn't bring back a lot. I had visions before I left. I'm like, oh, you know how you think you're going to get like a case of this or a flat of that and like just, and then I thought, yeah, let's be realistic here. What am I really going to want to deal with? Because you bring that home and you're like, oh no, what am I going to do with this? I had a girlfriend in, in university and she would go out to the Okanagan and she would bring back cases of peaches, cherries, wine, all of it. The back of her vehicle this was pre-kids, was just loaded to the top and she would spend forever doing all the canning mm -hmm. and drinking all the wine and just living her best life. <laughs> right? The wine is one thing because you can, you don't have to do anything except enjoy it. But the yeah. fruit, you have to deal mm -hmm. with it and you have to do it relatively soon mm -hmm. because it has a short shelf life, right? But she, this was pre-kids, so she was able to like dedicate entire swaths of time to like preserving and canning. One year, this was also a long time before kids, my friend had gone out because I think her grandparents lived out there. She had gone out in the summer and brought back just a huge load of plums. And she and I spent an entire oh. day, like probably 12 hours making plum pie. We, and we made all the pastry and we mm -hmm. processed all the plums and we made, I don't know, like 25 pies or something, like just a huge number of pies that we then split up and put in our freezers and we ate pie for like the next year and a half or something do you bake it before no. you freeze it no okay we i was gonna say that's it. a lot of that's like 25 hours of baking because the pie takes a while in the oven so i've never frozen a pie so i didn't know <laughs> you could do it either way i think because you can freeze a baked pie right you can sure but but you can also just put it together it's not baked wrap it up put it in your freezer and then when you take it out you thaw it and then bake it Ah, those pies I've, were so good. That sounds amazing. I love plums. Yeah, didn't do that. This I'm not doing that this year. What I'm doing <laughs> is I bought a reasonably small <laughs> basket of peaches. Ooh. The peaches just look so good. And then I was looking around. I was like, what can I make with these peaches? Mm -hmm. There's a few things I want to try to do, but listen to just this recipe title and you tell me you can veto it right now if you think it sounds terrible i have the power you have the power what could be awful with peaches just you okay. i'm just saying if you don't <laughs> think it's as appealing as i thought it was you this is your chance okay grilled chicken thighs with pickled peaches Ooh. right 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I've never had a pickled peach. And you know, anybody who listens to us regularly knows we love everything pickled around here. Pickled peaches. <laughs> so, well, you know, we love anything. But I think the only pickle I probably, that doesn't appeal to me, I don't like pickled eggs. I've never had one before. I would never eat a pickled pig's foot. That's a thing. I've never <laughs> had one presented to me, but yes, it oh. is. Okay. So this recipe is a quick pickle. It's just an uh, overnight in the fridge, but I did do a little bit of research and pickled peaches are a big thing in the Southern U S I guess. And you can can them. You can oh. pickle peaches and can them. These are just a quick pickle. That's um, easiest. Cause you're not doing a huge batch. So yeah. it's nice to have that quick pickle. Mm -hmm. And if we decide we love this pickled peach, maybe then in the future we, we could do that. Right? So this brine is vinegar, sugar, lemongrass, ginger, peppercorn, allspice berries, cloves, and cinnamon. Wow. I know. It sounds so good. Oh, I Yummy. think my brain might explode <laughs> tasting this. I'm trying to put this all together in my mouth and it's like, cannot process. <laughs> It just the le when I was reading it, I expected like you know vinegar, sugar, maybe yeah. ginger, peach and ginger often go together, and then I went lemongrass. What? Yeah, peppercorns. Like oh, I just I love this idea. Oh my gosh, I'm so on board. Like I would veto this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect you would. I just I want yeah. you to know you have the option. Okay, uh, so you're gonna we're gonna brine those overnight. Okay. Then they're going to come out of the brine and they'll be grilled oh. uh, just to kind of char them yep. a little bit. And they'll go with the with the salad and the chicken. And you Ooh. use that brine as your salad dressing. Oh, wow. I know it sounds... Sorry. I'm just... I'm, <laughs> you're just like... My brain is way. still processing. I'm just like, wow okay and the chicken mm. okay the chicken you're going to do skin on um mm. because you're going to grill this and want a nice skin on there chicken thighs marinated in sorghum syrup and salt so sorghum syrup is new to me mm -hmm. i don't know that i was that familiar with it i looked it up and apparently it is similar to molasses but it's processed differently so okay i'm going to try to find it but if i can't i have done a little bit of googling and i'm told you could substitute equal amounts of a different syrup corn syrup molasses maple syrup or mm. honey so okay. i have options if i can't find it so you're going to let your chicken sit in the syrup and salt overnight then the next day you're going to toss it with a vinaigrette that is oil vinegar garlic fresh parsley basil and tarragon and some pepper and that's all going to be grilled. You, so you've grilled your chicken, you grill your peaches quick so they get a little char on the outside. You're going to toss some arugula with that peach brine and there's your dish. <laughs> I'm so excited. I just want to eat it all. I'm so, so hungry. Like I came to this hungry. I <laughs> Oh yeah. I came to this recording hungry, which is a bad choice because what yeah. kind of sorcery is this? This sounds delicious. I found it on foodandwine.com. Mm. We'll put the recipe up on our blog and I'll note who wrote the recipe. And the reviews, of course, were all. Like, there could is... be nothing bad that happens with this. I know. It just sounds so, so good. And there's nothing too crazy here aside from sorghum syrup, which I've never bought, but I'm mm. assuming I can find it. Yeah. Um, and if not, I have substitutes. All yep. spice berries I've never bought. Have you? I don't think so. So am I going to have to go out of my way to find those? I don't know. And you know, if Sarah's still your friend, maybe you <gasps> can shop her pantry. <laughs> if Sarah's my friend, she better be my friend. Uh, <laughs> you're right. I'll have to see if she's got all spice berries. Our old co-host <laughs> who has all the spices. <laughs> Sarah's spice cabinet. Well, she buys them in like big amounts and then has like way more than she needs. Well, I could buy this small bag for five bucks or the gigantic one for seven. Of course you're gonna buy the gigantic one well and don't you find that spices are often cheaper if you go to the international aisle at the store uh, yes. and they are big bags of it there's huge bags of peppercorn for half the price of the small jar of peppercorns i know that's a tip for all of you out there go yeah. check if your 
store has an international aisle, they will probably have every spice, the seeds instead of ground. If yes. you want to grind it yourself, that you can often find the seeds. Oh. Hey, do you have tarragon, parsley, or basil still in your garden? I got basil and tarragon. <gasps> oh, I knew you would. Okay. Let me know how much. Oh my God, I'll this is so when I... fucking good. Heaven. I know, right? <sighs> sounds so delicious. I know, I've got some shopping to do, and then I always, obviously I have to marinate overnight, and then we get to eat. Hey listeners, thanks so much for joining us on today's episode. As we talk about this pickled peach, it brings to mind the blackberry and lemon shrub that Heather made last season as a cocktail drinking vinegar. Now I know this sounds a little bit strange, but if you've never had a drinking vinegar before, you've got to give this a try. Go back and search for our blackberry lemon shrub cocktail. It's really easy to make. It just takes blackberries, lemons, sugar, and cider vinegar. It'll add an unbelievable refreshing zing to your favorite cocktail, or it's great just with some sparkling water. Tell us if you enjoy a shrub and enjoy the rest of this episode. This what happened so fast. Oh, so fast. This was such a quick turnaround. I love it. <laughs> I found a recipe. I'm going to make it. Do you want it? Yeah. Okay. So we record part one and then today I made it, I delivered for lunch and it is now 2.30 in the afternoon and we're back. <laughs> that has to say something, right? That it turned around that fast and here we are ready to talk about it again. Quick, some easy to make and yeah. delicious. And we're excited to talk about it. I wouldn't be like chomping at the bit to be like, let's get back and talk about this terrible meal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the other good thing about doing it so quick is that I remember mm. because I just made it. Okay, let me tell you the process. So last night I pickled my peaches, put them in the fridge, and I put my chicken into a, sort of a brine overnight. So we'll talk about those things. Six medium peaches on the bottom of the peach, kind of mark a little X with a paring knife. Okay. I'm going to take a big pot of boiling water, put them in the water for a few minutes until the peel looks like it's starting to come off. Take them out into an ice bath to stop that process. And then theoretically, you can just peel that peel right off. Flip off the skins. The peel did not come off nice and neat for me. And the recipe says to peel them and have them. This did not happen so nice and neat for me. You might even find that it's easier to cut them apart in whatever <laughs> size pieces you get and peel them afterwards. And I used a paring knife okay. to peel it and I couldn't get nice, perfect halves. You can't really twist a peach that has been boiled a little bit like that because it's softer oh. now. And it's not like you can just cut around it and twist it and it comes apart nice and neat. It doesn't really work that way. Or perhaps it does if you're a professional chef, but... <laughs> Not in my home kitchen. I struggle with that even with um, tomatoes. I know. They don't always come nice and neat. And yeah. Anyway, the main thing you want is pieces of peach big enough to grill because you're going to be putting these on the grill. You just want them big enough that they don't fall through. Yeah. Great of your grill. So don't worry about what they really what they look like, what size the pieces are. Just get it off the pit peeled. And then you're going to in that same pot you can mix up your pickling liquid. Mm. So discard your water and then put in, you're gonna do white vinegar, sugar, one stalk of lemongrass, just that inner bulb. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, so you peel it till you get just the inner bulb and you slice it up. An inch of fresh ginger peeled and sliced. Whole black peppercorns. If you can find allspice berries, you want five of those. I did not, I used a teaspoon, I will double check, half a teaspoon of allspice, two whole cloves and uh, approximately three inch long cinnamon stick that you're going to bring to a boil on the stove and let it boil until your sugar has fully dissolved then take it off the heat let it cool a little bit it doesn't need to be cooled all the way but cool it a little bit and then pour it over your peaches in a bowl let it cool now on the countertop cover it and put it in the fridge overnight. That's going to be your pickled peaches. Wow. This is still the night before you're going to put in a large bowl, eight cups of water and one tablespoon of syrup. I did not find the sorghum syrup. Right. I used honey mm. instead. 
but you could use honey, maple syrup, molasses, whatever you've got. Don't go out of your way. You only need a tablespoon of it. Yeah. And two tablespoons of salt. Whisk that up, put it with your chicken, again, cover it up, put it in the fridge overnight. Hmm. That is a really simple brine and I almost uh -huh. never brine chicken. So that's a, uh, that's really easy. It's <laughs> very simple. And I almost question like, what's the point of putting the syrup in here? It's so little. It like, seems like a, small a amount. super tiny amount. Yeah. And even the salt is not very much. Okay. So then this morning I took all of that out of the fridge and then it's a little bit different than the instructions say but i would recommend you prep your chicken first so you're gonna take your chicken out of the brine and you're gonna get your marinade ready which is olive oil red wine vinegar two mm. garlic cloves finely chopped fresh parsley basil and tarragon and you're gonna just mix that all in with the chicken i just put it all on top of the chicken, mix it up with my hands, and then you want to sit at room temperature for about an hour, or I say as long as it takes you to now do the peaches. Okay, that's smart. Do your chicken, yeah, do your chicken, let it sit while you grill your peaches, and then if it's not a whole hour, I don't think it was for me, I think it was less, maybe 40 minutes or something, I think it's fine. Yeah, I'm quite convinced <laughs> it is just fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Okay, so for the peaches, turn on your barbecue to like a medium heat and brush some oil on the grate. Take your peaches out of the brine, but keep that pickling liquid. Yeah. It's very important and very delicious, so do not toss that out. Keep it. Grill your peaches over medium heat until lightly charred, four to five minutes, the recipe says. So I aired on the low side. I didn't want to like burn mm. them. So I didn't get a ton of char on my peaches, but I also had a lot of small pieces and I didn't want them to get too soft or to fall between or get stuck. Yeah. So I say it doesn't matter. As long as you're getting a little bit of a grill on them and warm them up, I think you're good. Don't fuss too much about it. I even think if you didn't grill them, oh yeah, be okay. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. Taste that peach. When you take it out of the liquid, taste it and you'll see what I mean. I don't know that grilling made any difference to it. I'm sure it just warms it up. Yeah, just kind of, and it makes it look kind of pretty if you do mm. get a little grill mark on it um, and taste that liquid. <laughs> it's like so good, so good. As you talked okay. about that, Brian, I was like, uh, can I go get it out of the fridge and get my spoon? Because I want to like, <laughs> I want to sit here and sip it. I want to just it's, sip it. It's a lot like a shrub, like a drinking vinegar. Mm -hmm. You could just throw some sparkling water in there and you've got a nice cocktail. I might just do that later. Why not? Okay, so now your peaches have been grilled. You're going to take them off, just set them aside and go back to your chicken. Keep it on medium heat. The recipe says moderate. I don't really know. I assume that means medium. <laughs> so it's kind of what I did. I think my grill was around like the 400 degree mark. Yeah. And I put them first on that top little grill, not directly above the heat, because they have all that herb and the vinegar and oil. Right. They're drippy. They're very mm -hmm. drippy. And you, I was afraid if I put them directly on the grill at the bottom, it would just whoosh, like flare up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. So I started on the top, skin down, and it did still flare up, even putting them up there because they're so drippy with all that good stuff on there. So I put them up there till it calmed down, and then I moved them to the lower grill on the barbecue. And you're going to just grill them as you normally would grill chicken. The recipe says 20 to 25 minutes, but I used the thermometer, so I wasn't really watching the clock too closely. Yeah. You know, make sure to double check your biggest thigh if you've got one that's kind of bigger than the other ones. And mm -hmm. take them off the grill when they're done and just set, let them rest for at least five minutes while you assemble your salad. I had a simple arugula and baby spinach mix mm. that I bought at the store. You could do whatever kind of greens you like. Toss or drizzle with your salad dressing, which is going to be your pickling liquid plus olive oil and salt and pepper. And I suggest you just do this to taste. And when I put that in a jar and shook it up, dipped a little lettuce leaf in there and tasted it, mm, it was a little heavy on the oil for my taste. So I added more pickling liquid, adjusted salt and pepper, make it the way you like it. Drizzle that all over everything. I drizzled it over my entire plate <laughs> and then yep. enjoy. Eat, 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 eat it all up. Well, Heather told me she was gonna do this for lunch. So I had, two cups of coffee this morning and just sat waiting 
<laughs> for this delivery. Nice. So when she ding donged, I jumped and ran to the door and ready to eat. I scarfed that down so fast. It was so good. I love that pickled peach. I know. Oh my God. Wow. So freaking good. I would even say like, instead of the red wine vinegar in the chicken, I would put the pickling liquid in there oh, too. Oh, great idea. Like why, why add other flavors in here? Cause this one is the best. <laughs> yeah. And you have so much of it. You have, <laughs> mm, you have way more pickling liquid than you need. When I saw the salad dressing, I'm like a tablespoon. What? But I've got this giant <laughs> bowl of this liquid. Yeah. That's why at the end I was just like drizzle it over everything. Oh my, so tasty. Yeah. It was delicious. I, I have to make this. Everybody has to make this. You have to oh make God. this. It is just, oh, and I don't know. I haven't had peaches yet this year. So maybe that's why I'm also loving this so much. But the peaches in this were just, mm. it really hit the spot. Mm. I really like the combination of flavors in that pickle. Like clove yeah. and allspice gave it kind of a, I think I had texted you at one point that the, the pickling <laughs> liquid smells like Christmas as I was mixing it up. I text you, it smells like Christmas. I'm not mad at it. I kind of like it. Yeah. Then you've got lemongrass and ginger in there. And it sounds like a strange combination to me, but all together, it was just, oh, it all matched know. together. I don't know if I could pick out all of those individual flavors either because it, they were all well balanced. So it wasn't like, oh, wow, this is really Christmassy because of the cloves or like all of that stuff really balanced out. And I couldn't tell mm. who, what was in it who? anymore. I couldn't tell who, what, where, who? where, where am I? <laughs> What's happening? Who's in this liquid? I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> And we happen to know because we've been messing around with these shrubs mm -hmm. that you can like, I know I can leave that liquid in my fridge now for a few days and it's only going to get better. It's going to yeah. turn into less of a marinade and more of a shrub and we're going to make drinks out of it. <laughs> yeah, that like sharpness of the vinegar is going to just mellow right out. Mm. I can't believe that's white vinegar even. I'm still like boggled by it. Wow. So good. And that chicken. Mm. I love how crispy, like how that skin just crisped up. Yeah. Like it really stuck on there and crisped up so nicely. I just, it was really good and juicy. Mm -hmm. Chicken thighs are my favorite on the barbecue. And every once in a while we catch those sale packages when we go mm -hmm. shopping. Yeah, you could do this recipe with any piece of chicken. I bet you could brine a whole chicken and put these flavors around it and roast it with this. Oh, totally could. Ooh, I happen to have a whole chicken in my freezer. Hmm, now you've given me ideas. Since you've already got the brine made up, that's a flavor to be enjoyed. Pickled peach. Who knew? You know, I had an idea that oh. this would also be good with um, pineapple. Because think of how good a pineapple is when you grill it. Yeah. You could make a pineapple pickle with basically the same brine and then grill, like do them in the big rings and grill them. And they're a little bit more resilient to having mm -hmm. some high heat on them. So you could really get that char on yeah. them. You could put those on a burger. Because <gasps> we make pineapple oh. burgers when there's good pineapples. Mm -hmm. Love that. Oh my goodness. You could put that on a pulled pork sandwich. So could these peaches would also be really delicious. Oh, all those things. dang. That's a good point. In anything. Seriously. Oh, so wow. good. I can't believe we've never had a pickled peach before. Where have we been living under this rock? What rock have we been living under? <laughs> <laughs> One of my kids said this the entire thing including the bonus item we haven't yet talked about. The entire thing was one of the best meals he's ever eaten, he said, in his 12 years of life. But still, that's saying something. He loved it so much. Because I have these peaches and I've been looking for things to do with them, so I made a peach cake. Heather is making it all today. Well, the thing is I have the peaches. You've got to use them before either we eat them or they go too soft. And a couple of them were a little bruised on the outside, so I wanted to use them up. And I made a cake that's called the All Summer's Fruit Cake from the Eat Alberta First cookbook oh. that I've been baking muffins and things out of. And this cake in the book, it was made with cherries, but it's called All Summer's Fruit because you can use any type of fruit that is in season. Man, her baking recipes mm. are winner. So good. 
So the cherry Dang. cake had Kirsch uh, <gasps> liqueur in it. And so for mine, I did uh, an almond liqueur. Di Sorono is the one I had in my cupboard. I thought almond and peaches. I was going to throw some bourbon in there, but then I thought, no, no, I'm going to try this stuff because it's just those flavors to me were like, that's what did it. And a little bit of cinnamon. But there was yeah. something in there that I was like, what is this magic? And the top gets real a nice, real kind of crispy, oh, crunchy, yeah. dark layer on the top that I really, really love. It's almost like sugar. It's like a hard sugar crust on top almost. Like it, mm. I don't know why, <laughs> but I don't need to know. Yeah, who cares what the magic <laughs> is? <laughs> Just do it that way forever. I feel like it could have had more fruit in it. So what you do is put like half the batter in the bottom. Okay. And then put some fruit on and then half the batter and then fruit on top. Mm. And I wasn't sure how my, I kind of just sliced my peaches and laid them one yeah. layer and then laid them on the top. You almost could have just chopped up those peaches and mixed it right <laughs> into that cake, in my opinion. It might have changed the texture or the finish of the cake because I know I have done that before with, making just simple muffins and being like, oh, I'm going to double the fruit. And then you're like, oh, nothing really cooked well because it was too moist. Oh, that from yeah. all the fruit. So I would say your fruit balance in there while well, the peaches were delicious and I could eat nothing but peaches for days now. <laughs> I think the balance was really good because the cake turned out so fluffy and so perfect and it was like the perfect surprise to have with my lunch. My one little guy came to see and was like, oh, what's in this? And as you left, I was like, no, I'm not sharing with you. And he's like opening up the boxes as I started to put them down. I was like, no, go away. Get your own Heather. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Good luck with that. Oh, boy. These are winners. These are this, so good. This was a serious winner of a recipe, this salad. Yeah. And I think talking about this with pineapples, in the first mm. half we talked about doing that with mango. I think all of these fruits would, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to like make it like a bit more substantial, I could see doing like some grilled peppers or zucchini. Mm. Or like some of the, if you've got some of those garden veggies right now, grill those up and put them with it yeah. I just it was it's pretty simple because it's just greens chicken peaches yeah. but I think you could like add to this oh you could keep going and going <laughs> or put something end. like like quinoa or yeah. what was that other grain that we had with a salad the uh, farro farro yeah that would be I really, really liked that that was delicious or even that like put some like nuts and cheese in there just make that your like lunch for the day we can't control ourselves. These peaches are fucking amazing. Go for it. Go make it. With whatever fruit you can find, pickle all the things and then just drink the liquid. And just drink the liquid. <laughs> yeah. And now for the fine print. Join us over on the socials. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on our website, threekitchenspodcast.com. Remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. I'll give you a heads up so you can, like, be hungry <laughs> when it arrives. 